Hey everybody, Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this cool procedural paper texture inside of Blender. And it's not that hard to do, the entire effect's going to come from the material that we create inside of the node editor. So let's jump into Blender and get started. So the first thing we want to do is delete both the cube and the lamp by pressing X to delete, and we'll go to the cycles engine. I'll press 7 and 5 on the numpad to go to top view orthographic mode. Now I can press shift A to add in a plane and S to scale it up. I'll press 5 and then enter. Now we can tab into edit mode and with everything selected I'm going to subdivide this by pressing W and increase the number of cuts to 10. And right now we're in the supported uh, mode for Blender and we want to switch that to experimental because once we do this if we add in a subsurf modifier now you'll see that there's this adaptive uh, setting here and you just want to check that and we'll leave the rest of the default settings as it is. Now we'll go over to the material settings and add in a new material. I'm just going to rename this paper and under the settings here we want to scroll down to displacement and change it from bump to both. This way when we add in our displacement in the material it will actually have a geometry that's affected instead of just having that n flat normal map effect. Now I'm going to open up the new window here and switch it to the node editor. I'll press N and T to collapse both those menus. And I'm also going to add in an HDR image for our environment lighting. This is just a simple image of a kitchen that I have. And I'm also going to make the background transparent so that we don't have to see the HDR in the background. And if we press Shift Z to go to rendered view, you'll notice that it doesn't look like anything special. And we also want to add in a light, so I'm going to press Shift A and add in a sun lamp. And from side view, I'm going to press R to rotate and just rotate it on an angle like that. And from front view, I'm going to rotate it on an angle like that as well. So now if we go back to rendered view and go to top view, you'll see we're getting a lot more light. And for this light, you just want to make sure it's set to pure white with the strength of about 1. Now we can select our plane again and start to edit its material. So, first off we have this diffuse shader. And I'm going to add in a mix shader. We're going to mix it with a glossy shader so that it can have some nice reflections. And I'm also going to add in a Fresnel node to use as the factor. Just like that. And right now this roughness is set to 0.2, which I don't really like. I'm going to set it to about 0.5 so that the reflections are a lot smoother. So if we go to perspective mode and look at this on an angle, if this was set to a roughness of 0, you can see that the reflection is really sharp. But with this set to 0.5, it's a lot more smooth. I'm just going to set this reflection color to pure white. And for this diffuse shader, I'm going to make it a pure yellow color and then I'm going to decrease the saturation to about 0.1 so it gets that yellowish tint. So that's looking good. Now for the actual bump material we're going to first add in a noise texture and since I have the node wrangler add-on enabled I can press control T and it will bring up this mapping node and the texture coordinate node automatically and I'm going to switch it from generated to object like that and if we were to plug this noise texture let's press control shift and left click you can see what it looks like here and I'm just going to plug it into our displacement like that and if we take a look you can see the effect it's having it's a very slight displacement so I'm going to add in a color ramp node here just so it's black and white and if we were to, so let's say, change this black value like that, and then tab into edit mode and tab back out so it refreshes, you can see that wherever it's black, it uh, has a flat height. And wherever it has white, the height increases up to a value of 1. So that's looking good. I'm going to delete that color ramp for now. And if we take a look at this no noise texture, if we were to add in a Verona texture, let's see, let's add that in. And if we take this uh, color output from the noise texture and plug it into the Verona, you can see that we're getting this really distorted effect. And it kind of looks pretty cool. 
So I'm just going to keep this Voronoi texture scale at 5. And for this noise texture, I'm going to bring it down to 1. And I'm also going to increase this detail to the max, which is about 16. You can start to see that it's looking really cool. So now let's just plug this into our displacement texture. And we'll tab into edit mode and then tab back out so it refreshes. I'm also going to give it our paper material. You can start to see that it's looking like a crumpled piece of paper. It's looking pretty cool. But right now the strength is a little too high. So to fix that, we're going to add in a math node. And let's make sure we switch this to multiply. And if we give it a value of 0.5 and then tab into edit mode and tab back out, you can see that the height is not as drastic and it's looking a lot better. So I think that looks pretty good. If you don't like the distortion effect that this noise texture is having, we can add in a mix RGB node. And let's just plug in this noise texture into the bottom socket. And let's plug in uh, our mapping node into the top. And if we set the factor to zero and plug this into the Veronai texture, that's essentially the same thing as just having the mapping node plugged into the Veronai texture. If we set the factor to one, it's the same thing as having this color output plugged into the vector. And so if you don't like the amount of distortion that's in this right now, we could just play around with these factor settings until you get something that you like. So maybe you want to try 0.75 or even 0.5. But for me, I'm just going to leave the factor at 1 because I think that looks best. And also what we can do is if we added in a color ramp node here, you could tweak these uh, black and white values for something that you want like that. And it would adjust the overall effect as well. And you can see that there's more flat sections and the peaks are more isolated. And if we were to do this, you could actually create more of like a terrain or landscape effect with this method. So I'm just going to set those to the extremes like that. And I'll tab into edit mode and tab back out so it refreshes. And that's looking pretty good. So now if you wanted to add some writing onto this uh, paper texture, you would need a black and white image. So I have one, so I'm just going to add that in. Let's go to texture, image texture. I'm just going to open it up here. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. And if we take a look at that, you can't see anything right now because it doesn't have any UV coordinates. So let's open up a new window here. Like that. Switch it to the UV image editor. Let's open up our paper texture, which I have right there. And with this texture selected, I'm going to press Control T so that it brings up the texture coordinates. And we want to make sure UV coordinates are plugged into the vector. And I'm going to tab into edit mode. And with face mode selected, I'm just going to deselect everything. And then with B to bring up the box select, I'm just going to select these faces right here. And from top view orthographic mode, I'm going to press U and then project from view bounds. And essentially what that does is it projects uh, this section here onto our image and fills up the entire texture. So if we go to texture mode now, we can see what it looks like. And it's a little distorted, so I'm going to edit this UV here by scaling it along the x-axis a little bit, like that. And then we we'll can scale it down so it's bigger, like that. So I think that looks pretty good. Now with our camera selected, we can press Alt-G and Alt-R to clear its location and rotation. And if we press 0 on the numpad, we'll go to our camera view. Now I can press G and the middle mouse button, and then just drag it out until our uh, paper object fits our camera view. So now if we take a look at the rendered view, let's just plug this into our diffuse shader, like that. You can see it's looking a lot like paper. If you really don't like that white color for the paper and you want the yellowish tint again, all you have to do is duplicate this mix shader here, or the mix RGB node, and use this black and white image as the factor, like that. And whatever is white in our image is going to be the bottom socket color, so we want that to be the light yellow color. So let's just press Control C here and copy it there. And whatever is black will be the top socket, so let's just make that appear black color. 
And if we plug it into our diffuse shader, we'll get the black from our ink and we'll still have the yellowish tint for our paper texture. So that's pretty much it. Now I'm just going to come over to the render settings here. I'm going to decrease the samples to about 100. And I'm also going to make sure denoising is checked. Now I'm just going to render this out and I'll pause the recording and come back when it's done. Alright, so it's done rendering and it looks pretty good. One thing I might recommend is that you come over here to the color management settings and switch it from default to filmic just so you get some more realistic uh, lighting. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.